Joining us now is a reminder about what we know about Hunter Biden is someone who has brought a lot of Hunter Biden's discretions to light, the president of the Government Accountability Institute and author of Red Handed, How American Elites Get Rich, Helping China Win, Peter Schweitzer. Peter, welcome back to the show. Um, according to reports, Justice Department officials are looking at whether to charge Hunter Biden with various tax violations and possible foreign lobbying violations. But another report says that Hunter Biden and his longtime business partner, Eric Sher Sherwin, in 2016, we're working behind the scenes to solicit donations for former Biden advisor Fran Person's congressional campaign, while at the same time also working on Chinese business deals with Person's business partner. The question is, is that are Hunter's deals getting the attention that they should while we're all the focus is on Mar-a-Lago? Uh, no, I don't think they are. Uh, and it's always great to be with you guys. Thanks for having me. Um, I think you're exactly right, Sean. I mean, the, the interest here seems to be on what's happened in Mar-a-Lago, and that certainly is a legitimate story. It, it raises questions again about whether justice is being equally um, uh, laid out when you compare his treatment with that of Hillary Clinton. But you can say the same thing here with Hunter Biden. I mean, it's very clear if you look at the Hunter Biden laptop, if you look at his commercial activities, who was paying him, Hunter Biden was lobbying for foreign entities. He was in violation of FARA, the Foreign Agents Registration Act. There have been Americans over the last five, six years especially that have gone to jail for doing far less on that front than Hunter Biden himself has done, not to mention the tax evasion and the questions about foreign corruption. So yeah, it, it's a real problem. And I think the frustration a lot of people have with mar lago and these other issues is not the fact that there's FBI scrutiny. If there's gonna be FBI scrutiny, let it be there. But it's wildly inconsistent, and it seems like it depends whether you have a D or an R after your name, what kind of experience you're gonna have with law enforcement. Bingo. Peter, it looks like Speaker Nancy Pelosi's son, Paul Pelosi Jr., just took a page out of Hunter Biden's playbook. He joined her on her Asia trip recently, including uh, to Taiwan. And the, the problem is they were not transparent about this at all. She was asked about her son coming with her, and here's how she responded. His role was to be my escort. Um, usually uh, we, we invited spouses. Not all could come that I had him come, and I was very proud that he was there, and I'm did thrilled, have, and it was nice for me. Did he have any business dealings? No, he did not. Of course he did not. <laughs> Are you satisfied with that response, Peter? No, uh, not at all. I mean, look, Nancy Pelosi uh, has not been transparent about her husband's uh, business dealings. I mean, the issue is obviously relating to his stock trading. But if you look at his history, uh, he's done a lot of deals in mainland China uh, while Nancy Pelosi has been a powerful uh, Democratic politician. If you look at Paul Pelosi Jr., uh, he's been involved with a handful of companies, five or six, that have been looking to do deals in China. Many of them have ended up under SEC or, or investigation by U.S. federal authorities for various reasons. So the notion that he's just there uh, to kind of be an arm that, that can uh, uh, escort her to these events uh, isn't even accurate when you look at the pictures. Uh, there were some high-profile events where he wasn't there. Uh, so you wonder where he was and what he was doing. Uh, this is the reason the American people are so frustrated with so many powerful people in Washington. Those powerful people feel that that the average American's stupid. And if they basically tell them, no, there's nothing to see here, that the American people are gonna believe them. And the American people are a lot smarter than that. Peter, I've got about a minute left. Um, you have been very critical about this so-called um, Inflation Reduction Act that the Democrats passed, which is really just a big gift to the IRS. But you've actually made the case that it's a gift to China. Explain why in, in a minute, if you can. Yeah, I'm old enough, Sean, to remember the power that OPEC had in the uh, uh, in the oil sector uh, 20, 30 years ago. China is the, now the OPEC of green energy. If you look at wind energy, if you look at solar panels, 80% of them at least are produced in China. So this um, program uh, by Joe Biden is a massive economic boon because it's going to encourage Americans to buy solar panels and it's going to encourage the use of wind technologies. Those are all going to be made in China. And by the way, at the same time, Joe Biden has gotten rid of tariffs that protected the uh, struggling American solar industry that has had so much trouble 
trouble because China is dumping its products in the United States. So the big winner from this uh, policy and this program is not the American people. It's the Chinese energy industry that is going to make bank uh, when it when it's all said and done. Well, and Peter, you're the first person I've heard really talking yes. about this and the problem that it uh, creates for not having enough jobs in America, enough products being made in America. Once Peter again. Schweitzer, always good to see you. Thanks so much for having me. It's great to see you both.